Reverend Dr. Jamie Mathias is the champion of LGBTQ issues. He is the pastor of Holy Family American Catholic Church in South Austin. In 2012, he was elected as the first openly gay member of the Board of Trustees of the Austin ISD. Since then, the Austin ISD has participated for the first time in Pride festivities and was the second district in Texas to offer its employees benefits for same-sex couples. <laughs> Reverend Dr. Mathias possesses two undergraduate degrees, four graduate degrees, and his Doctor of Philosophy in Leadership Studies. He previously served as the founder of three local learning centers as president of a local high school and as pastor of Austin's largest Spanish-speaking Roman Catholic congregation. Reverend Dr. Mathias also serves on various boards and is active in various neighborhood associations. In July, he was wedded to Anthony Tang in a large public celebration on the Capitol grounds, and the couple recently returned from their honeymoon in Hawaii. Let's welcome Reverend Dr. Sisters and brothers, sisters and brothers, we have shaken the shackles in that land of oppression that held our ancestors bound. Amen. Amen. And with ecstatic joy, we danced on dry ground, witnessing how absolutely great is our God and emerging victorious. Amen. Today is a day of celebration. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. And who in this space cannot be caught up in the joy of Miriam and Moses, of Jessica and Becky, of Rodney and Rod, of Dory and Sue, of Carl and Jim, and all those people who've come through the events of these past two months, sensing, knowing that God has come through for us. America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, amen. Today is the day of celebration, and this Pride Week is like no other in history. For me personally, this Pride Week is different because, as Steve said, now I'm married. <laughs> On July 18th, my husband Anthony and I were married in a large public celebration at the capital of the great state of Texas, thumbing our noses <laughs> to those taskmasters in that pink dome who did everything they could this last legislative session to keep us bound. But love wins. Amen. <laughs> Anthony and I should not be together. <laughs> I am American. He is Chinese. He's part of Gen Y. I'm part of Gen X. I'm a Catholic priest. He is atheist. <laughs> Which is why you don't see him here this evening. <laughs> but you know what? Love wins. Love is that universal song that we sing. Those of my generation asked with Tina Turner, What's love got to do, got to do with it? 
sisters and brothers, what's love got to do, got to do with it? <laughs> Love's got everything to do with it. During our wedding at the Pink Dome, <laughs> with my parents and our Archbishop and my deacons and so many friends and loved ones, Anthony shared with us the story, the Chinese folktale of the butterfly lovers. The butterfly lovers, have you heard it? <laughs> Though Leon had died, Ju loved him and was determined to be with him for all eternity. They were not married, but they were devoted to one another and they were passionate about one another. The butterfly lovers. And they had made a vow to love one another until death. Now at Leon's grave, Jew descended into bitter despair and begged for the grave to open up and swap. With a clap of thunder, the grave opened up and Jew jumped into it without hesitation to be with Leon's body. And at that instant, their spirits turned into a pair of butterflies which emerged from the grave, flew away, and were never to be separated again. Love wins. Amen? Amen. Love is stronger than death, says the Song of Solomon. The passion of love bursting into flame is more powerful than death, stronger than the grave. And though it could be misinterpreted as a bit misogynistic, said Solomon's son, David, to his slain friend, Jonathan, your love for me was wonderful more wonderful than the love of women. Love wins. Amen. Amen. Says the psalmist, delight in God, you lovers of God. Gather your praise into one voice. Sing a new song. Proclaim your joy, for God's love fills the earth. Today is a day of celebration, sisters and brothers. Let us not forget the many people who gave up their lives to get us to this day. But let us also not forget those many small victories that got us here. As Steve suggested, when I'm not loving as a husband or serving as a priest, I am overseeing 85,000 students and 12,000 employees in our 129 public schools here in Austin. It's no small effort. And it's no small effort to bring change to a system that big. But we heard the good news. Within a year of my election, we brought to our employees benefits for same-sex couples. <laughs> Last year, the district celebrated its first Pride Week celebration, and this year, for the first time, we'll participate in, in the Pride Parade. not fool ourselves for a moment. Change is difficult. Amen? Amen? Change is difficult. 
In a song that recently became very popular, Macklemore talked about the people for whom change is difficult, right? Those people who try to preserve and to conserve things the way they are. Macklemore said, the right-wing conservatives think it's a decision and you can be cured with some treatment and religion playing God. Oh no, here we go. America the brave still fears what we don't know? And God loves all God's children is forgotten. But we paraphrase a book written 3,500 years ago. We've heard that song? Change is difficult. What is that paraphrased book that Macklemore is talking about? We are in the Deep South. The Bible Belt, right? We are in a place where people are fighting to keep Dixie alive and to continue enshrining those who fought to enslave others. Wow. Our Israelite ancestors grumbled against God and against Moses. For many of us on Sunday, we heard the words of John that many of Jesus' disciples, many of his disciples, turned against him, abandoned him, and could no longer follow him. At least two couples in my own congregation have told me during these past weeks that the thought of their pastor being gay and the thought of their pastor now being married causes too much cognitive dissonance for them. That their hearts can no longer love as they did before. Change is difficult. Let us pray for them. And for all those other persons, family members, friends, loved ones, enemies, those who struggle amid these winds of change. Let us pray that they might learn to see with the eyes of God and to love with hearts of flesh all our brothers and sisters, amen? amen? Sisters and brothers, today is a great day of celebration. Today is the day the Lord has made. Today is also a day, though, for us to commit ourselves to the work that remains to be done, to making this city and this nation the promised land, a land of love, a place where we and our households will serve the Lord. Who is the God of love. We come from many spiritual traditions this evening. We come from many spiritual traditions that bring great richness and diversity to our community, but in the end, we don't serve a God of judgment or exclusion or of condemnation. We serve a God of love a God of liberation and love.